In today's project, we build this portable battery box. All right, so let's get started building this pack. So this is a 32650 cell. Uh, they are a battery hookup. They're the 6,000 milliamp pack. It is going to be in a a uh, 4P and a 4S. So four in parallel and then four in series. Uh, this is a um, lithium iron phosphate. So they are nominal 3.2 volts. So this makes a really good uh, replacement for a 12 volt pack. Um, and we're just going to use these basically to bake a small uh, portable um, battery pack using one of these Harvard Freight cases. So I'll get that in there. For now, I got the uh, K weld set up. And we will uh, start spot welding. I got some of this 1P strip. So this will be really handy to connect these cells, make it a lot easier. So, all right, let's start welding some stuff on here. Thinking I'm probably gonna set the Kelly weld to 50 joules to start out with. We'll see how that works. Maybe we'll do a test one real quick just to see how it's ripping. Cut a small chunk off. test on one of these random negatives real quick I'm sure you guys can see do just a tad bit more but I also didn't have it on the between the dividers I don't know if you guys can see that you're supposed to weld between those areas but since I didn't have one on that particular sheet that I tested we'll set it to 55 this is two millimeter thick pure nickel so looks like we can cut this one right at the end right there up as best as I can. Just like that. So now the other side will be on both and this will be our main positive and our main negative. And for that, just got some single. And this isn't gonna be like a high out pack high output pack or anything it can deliver up to 60 amps in this configuration but for what we're using it for we'll be nowhere near that so looks good all right then I'll weld it up it's K weld I really do like it it does fantastic welds all right now these two and these two will now be connected 
and that will give us our um, bore S configuration. And like I was talking about these strips, if you guys never used these before, you see that little hole in it? So you spot weld between it and what happens with that is it, it's easier for the resistance to go straight through the nickel, especially when it's thick, and then you don't get a good weld. But if you have that hole in the middle, it actually makes it go down and come back up so you get a better weld. And if you do have a K-Weld, uh, don't try to weld up my settings. I am using a DIY battery that I built for this, so your settings will vary depending on your battery. Mine is putting about 1400 amps out at um, 4S. Battery is starting to get pretty warm, but I think we'll be able to, to finish this up without letting it cool down. All right, so there we go. I'll weld it up. Uh, if it tests this voltage. And to another thing to note, I did check all these cells. They are brand new, um, but before I bought them, they were all within, you know, a couple volts of each other. They're not hugely different, so. We should now have our 13 volts. You guys can't see. Here we go. Can you see? There you go. So 13.2 volts. So I do have a BMS coming from this. I'm gonna run a Dally Smart BMS, they're the, the newer guys, um, with the screen attachment. And that will let us see uh, amp draw, so it has a built-in shunt. It also obviously monitors each cell, so we'll be able to see the voltage of each cell group. Um, right from the BMS screen, so we won't have to use something like the, um, like you know, RC cell monitors. You can use these on a balance lead, and you know, see that information as well. Um, but since these new smart BMSs have all that built in, I think it's going to make a really clean build. So we're going to run with one of those as soon as it gets here. Hopefully, it'll be here sometime this week, and then we'll solder on our. Um, BMS wires and I'll show you guys how to do that but for now this part is done um, probably actually gonna throw it on the charger the balance charger and just let it charge for now temporarily just so we don't have any accidents some captain tape on this I'm trying to stay through your guys way but yeah you definitely do not want to short these out lithium iron phosphate is much safer than your typical lithium chemistry like an 18650 or a lipo cell um, they don't really explode like they do but nonetheless I still don't want them shorting out And the nice thing about lithium iron phosphate as well is they, they make a really good 12 volt replacement. So for you guys that watch the cargo trailer conversions and stuff, essentially what I'm doing is testing these cells to see how good they're going to be. And if they're good, then I'm going to use them in the camper um, in a 24 volt setup. So an 8S and probably like a 320P. So, or excuse me, it'd be like 40P, but 320 cells. So 
Should end up with a 24 volt, 240 amp hour pack. And then each one of these cells are capable of doing a 3C discharge um, burst. So that means there's 6,000 milliamps times three. And that would be your 3C charge rate or discharge really. It's not really charge rate, discharge. I think I'm just gonna use some 10 for this. This nice silicone wire. Um, again, this is going to be a very low draw pack. I'm not going to be trying to draw the 60 amps out of this pack. It's mainly going to be charging laptops and cell phones and that kind of stuff. So I'm not running an inverter off this. We do not need to go crazy with like any kind of eight gauge or double it up or anything for this small of a pack. It just wouldn't be efficient with this many cells. So it's just mainly experiment to test these cells out. So I figured if I was going to test them, I might as well make some kind of useful portable pack out of them. And personally, when I build battery packs, I like to solder the connection end on first before I put it on the battery if I have the option. So you don't run into a possibility of a short. So let's move this guy out of our way for now. We're just going to run a XT60. Go ahead and tint up the end of the connector first. go on these flat side is positive if you're not familiar with these there's a typical like RC style plug there you go good looking solder joint and this is exactly why I said I like to do these first because you can see how close these get. That will need a little bit more encouragement to stay in a spot. Now <laughs> If you are doing this on a battery, don't forget your heat shrink or your end. Never fails. Spin the way around to make sure we got that solder sucking up in there on all sides. Currently have my iron set to 900. It's some pretty thick wire. So you want to make sure your solder is going into your wire too, not just sitting on top of it. So now as I mentioned, main positive, main negative. This part you're going to want to be really fast with. You could technically spot wall the tab off of this and then use that as the solder on. Um, but I'm just going to solder right on top of the battery. But you got to be careful with this and you got to have a good iron because if you're not quick enough, you can actually damage your cells. But this iron's pretty hot. You see it tin that up really quickly. So we were, weren't on there very long at all. And I like to melt a little solder on there just to spread the flux out like this. And then beat it on there. 
ground. There we go. I'm gonna alternate. I'm gonna go back over here now. Start that melt. Solder is always hottest when solder is flowing, so add a little bit will help it suck down on there as quick as possible. Hold it with something. There we go. battery testers plug it in you can see at the very top we got our pack voltage now obviously I don't have a balance lead hooked up to this right now so we won't see anything but that um, I have some of that stuff coming tomorrow so I think for now this part is done and then when I get the balance leads I will do the balance points and then we will be uh, good to go all right another thing I'm actually gonna do real quick before I get those leads is I'm gonna I cut some of these little tabs out real fast and I'm gonna solder them on in the middle and then uh, we'll spot let them down and that'll give us a spot to solder our balance lead so we can minimize the soldering on our batteries as much as possible um, I did it on those because it like I said it it's going to be a main bus bar kind of thing and the top I think is only 0.15 millimeter nickel versus the two so and should mention that since this is a um, nickel to nickel I did turn the spot welder down quite a bit on these Twenty four joules on my setup. All right, there we go. So now we'll just some solder on those. Try not to melt my three D printed holders in the bottom. Now, if you guys are not familiar with building these packs, um, these tabs will make more sense to you later on when I get the uh, battery management system in or BMS it essentially monitors each cell group so we need to have a way to attach wires to each one of these cells I just prefer not to solder on them as much as I can alright there we go so I think next we will, uh, I said I have some alligator clips I can charge this with my RC charger to get that all balanced out.